well, uh, first of all, welcome. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the you, you know, Center for Middle East Studies for inviting us to speak with you. In particular, thank you to uh, Dr. Andrea Fis, uh, Dr. Julie Ellison, she's really very helpful for you. Thank you for again. Uh, and also Megan Young. Uh, and also, I would like to thank you, Center for Turkish Studies. Dr. Wright's Western uh, agreeing to discuss them today for us. Uh, we're very happy to be here and eager to hear your feedback and hopefully be able to answer your question about our presentation today. We also want to thank uh, our friend uh, U.S. Head Abroad for connecting us to the Center for Middle East uh, Studies. <laughs> Uh, my topic is the impact of the cultural phenomenon uh, in shaping of our uh, Turkish foreign policy. Uh, I would like to give some information about the culture and the foreign politics in all over the world, in, in uh, world history. Uh, and then I will try to be analyzing Turkish foreign policy as a discourse analysis. Uh, I will try to find out the cultural things in our uh, decision makers uh, discourse. Uh, I'll choose two uh, different uh, cases in Turkish foreign policy. One of them is North Iraq uh, issue and the other one is the Syrian issue. Uh, I'll pick the North Iraq uh, because we have so many cultural uh, binding with the you know, North Iraq people and Kurdish or Turkmens or the Kirkuk issue as well. It's really important for our foreign Policy. And then I will pick the you know the uh, Syrian issues because you know you all know that you know, Syria has a civil war right now and uh, we are the, the all do uh, around three and a half million Syrian refugees in our country right now uh, and we have a, a foreign policy issues is really important for us. So first of all, I will give you before the, you know, the cases. I will give you some information about the culture and foreign politics and international relations all over the world. Uh, from the second half of the 20th century, culture has become a, became a, a key concept for both international relations theories and also foreign policy preferences. During the Second World War, perhaps the move to change the course of the world had been achieved by using concept of culture in international literature. While the war continues, uh, I'm sure you know uh, better than me, uh, the United States government asked Ruth Benedict from the you know, Columbia University, uh, she's a professor of the anthropology department, uh, about the cultural uh, research about Japan's culture, Japanese culture. Benedict's work, which is completed in 1994 and 19, 1946, she was published in Turkey also, the book published uh, end of the 1960s. The book name is Chrysanthemum and Seaborn. It was really uh, interesting about the culture and the foreign politics and also international relations because probably the, the book uh, affecting the uh, end of the you know, Second World War uh, because uh, US foreign policy uh, want to know the Japanese culture and then uh, they try to be new policies about the Japanese because they don't know that. Uh, and they want to do that kind of research uh, from the uh, anthropology department. And also during the post-World War II period, regional study centers, as we are now uh, in the uh, Arizona University Middle East Center, uh, <laughs> opened in many universities, especially in the United States, the purpose of opening these centers was experience of, uh, was basically to train experts in these areas by learning the languages, cultures, and historical experiences of specific regime, uh, and to analyze the reciprocal uh, relationship that would be established in these regions. Uh, the analysis of the national characters emerged during this period was one of the key concepts of the international relations as well. Uh, as a source of foreign policy, we can talk about three different variants or dimensions. Uh, the, one of them is the cultural goals, the second one is the ideological goals, and the material interest. 
these three different variables may be sometimes influential on uh, foreign policies of countries. For example, according to the Islamic Republic of Iran, the unbelievers moved from the religious belief in order to uh, not to be effective in the Islamic world showed that they have a cultural drive in the Arab struggle against Israel. Uh, another example, in 1970s Germany, you know, Germany was divided into two parts, one part is the communist part, the second, another part is the East part, is the communist part. Uh, it, has a, it was a sharp distinction between uh, ideological differences. But also, uh, uh, West Germany had alleviated travel restriction, made improvement to family cohesion, removed the ban on broadcasting in order to be followed by his brothers in East Germany. In this case, it's clear that the foreign policy of the West Germany was driven by the ethnic sensitivities. Also, uh, when we look at the Soviet foreign policy implementations, we see how effectively ideology is in their foreign policy. Soviet Russia was uh, very interested in countries like Angola and Indonesia. Although it strategically had a little uh, important for achieving the world proletarian revolution as uh, amnesied by Marx. Similarly, for example, the dominance of the principles of uh, principles such as democracy and human rights in the foreign policy of the United States shows the influence of the ideology on this foreign policy as well. When we look at the effect of the material interest on foreign policy, uh, also the mainstream international relations theories and foreign policy theories, uh, it's uh, about the material interest generally, idealism and realism as well. Uh, we can come across with the rational choice approach, we call. Uh, in general, as the realist paradigm and the liberal thinker show that human nature, security, comfortable life, development in the material direction and desire to be a powerful are basic values of mankind. Uh, since these values reflect people's wishes, uh, they are also regarded as national interest of the state concern. Moreover, when it assumed that state pursue their aims in rational ways in foreign policy, states are expected uh, as within a framework of paradigm for example, in 1971, India signed a friendship agreement with the Soviet Union, Union to deter China. France aligns with the Russia to protect from the Germany. And also, beginning of the 1990s, both Soviet Union and China abandonment of socialism as an economic system can be given by an example. Because interest of these states on prosperity and sovereignty were stronger than, stronger than their ideological commitment and uh, also the ideals of the Marx and, it, and Mao. Therefore, the culture, which is one of the basic elements that determine the foreign policy of a state, is a form of the rules conduct concern, conducted concern where it segments in a country where language, religion, morality, and tradition determine political, social, commercial, and family life. Uh, according to Hudson, culture is all human works arising as a form of knowledge, beliefs, and behaviors uh, peculiar to human society. Also, according to the Efegi, he's my mentor, uh, PhD mentor, uh, the cultural values and beliefs guide people, guide people in particular about the definition of problems because cultural acts on part of the individuals uh, in how they behave and how they want to relate to other people in their living society. Therefore, while individual uh, is in political decision-making mechanism, they are under the influence of the culture, cultural values posted by the leaders of countries, especially those leading for uh, foreign policies, both legitimate the policies applied are accepted by the general public. Uh, so the last part of my general information about the, uh, the pretext they are in you know, countries using the pretext, the culture, because of the legitimate their policies as well. Uh, most of the foreign policies related to religion and ethnicity are emotional. In 19th century, Russia, Russia did not expect to make a cultural propaganda to mobilize the pan-Slavic feeling of the Poles, Czechs, Slovaks, Croats, Serbs, and Ukrainians. At the expense of the Austria-Hungary and Ottoman Empire to increase their influence over the Central Europe, and the Balkans. 
Also, European forces continued the colonialism in the eye of the world, saying they were in effort to modernize the pagan societies in order to legitimize their colonialism. Today, in order to uh, preserve the, the desire to regain the political power of old empire, for example, Russia involved in the internal affairs of states becoming independent after the dissolution of the Soviet Union on the ground of the protecting ethnic grounds and Russian citizens as well. In some cultural premises uh, can be used by the governments to obtain public support, support in their foreign policy. One of the most important of these, this is, these are or, uh, the revival of the Russian Orthodox Church in the Second World War, abandoning the attitude of the Communist Soviet Union towards nationalism and dynasty in order to provide social support for German attacks. Another example is that on the eve of the Gulf War, the secular Baptist Saddam Hussein wrote Bismillah, uh, an important symbol of the Islamic belief on the Iraqi flag in support of his own society and, and, other, uh, and other Islamic countries as well. Also the fact that Saddam prayed in the mosque and showed it all Iraqi people is another indication of how important the cultural codes are for states. Uh, as we know that you know the Saddam was a secular man, but he using you know the uh, Islamic world and the mosque for the supporting the people and also in other country in other Islamic countries in the Middle East. As we mentioned above, while uh, as I mentioned above, while the states are shaping foreign policy decisions, they can make decisions in an ideological, cultural, or or racial way, depending on many <coughs> different variables. What is at stake here is not the fact that which is decision-making situation is more dominant, but the fact that all of these were three variables can be influential in foreign policy decision. In this sense, it's assumed that the effect of the concept of culture shaping the foreign policy decisions uh, that constitute the main theme uh, of the article is, uh, is as important as these two cases, ideological and rational way. <coughs> Uh, and uh, I will try to find out our Turkish foreign policy, this, the culture, how uh, shaping our foreign policy, but we cannot uh, find out the you know, foreign policy uh, output. So I just try to find out the, how uh, the culture, how our culture, how it impact our politicians' discourse uh, about say, specific uh, cases. Uh, so I just choose this two cases, North Iraq and the Syrian uh, issue. Uh, <coughs> uh, then I will give you, I don't want to make a long too much, I, I just give you some discourse about North Iraq 2005 to 2007. It's a very critical uh, time for us. Also my dissertation is just uh, including these uh, three years. And I will give some uh, specific and the uh, discourse uh, taken from then, I try to analyze how culture is affected. By the way, I will give you some information about our discourse also in North Iraq. North Iraq discourse is the, we can divide into two parts. One is PKK, because very important for us, because it's a terrorist group. It's always, uh, we have a problem with that. But uh, this is not my, my dissertation is not including you know, the PKK things, because it's not a cultural thing. I just try to find out you know, the Kipri issue, uh, and the Turkmen issue uh, in North Iraq. So I will give you some uh, discourse from Recep Tayyip Erdogan uh, and also Davut Oğlu. And the last one is Abdullah Gül because he was president in that time. Recep Tayyip Erdogan was a prime minister and the Davut Oğlu was the uh, very influential in our foreign policy because of the Recep Tayyip Erdogan in that time. <laughs> In 2006, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan uh, says that about the uh, election that they want to refrain uh, about 2007. Before that, uh, he says that we have focused on the sensitive of Kirkuk to a special status. If Kirkuk is to be sacrificed, is an unexpected result, unexpected result with a referendum be held in 2007, we can say that it can be a very serious problem sourced in Iraq. And also he says that and also Iraqi uh, officials agree with me. 
And the other one, in 2006 again, uh, he's talking about the uh, North Iraq sect and their city. Uh, I, will very clear, uh, I will be very clear as a friend from here, neighboring countries, that taking into account was over mainly in Turkey. Iraq will not stabilize. Everyone should see, I know it, to act on it. Especially sectarian groups and ethnic elements in Iraq should seriously consider this warning. Another uh, discourse about North Iraq is also it's also about the Turkey issue. I have to make this warning today, especially with regard to intention of these who pursue the division of the Iraq and what has happened in Kirkuk. You know, I state that Iraq issue is becoming a prior priority for us over in European Union issue. And the last uh, and there are another uh, discourse about North Iraq from Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Uh, it's about Turkmen issue in Iraq. All the support given by the Turkmen facilities is given in order to protect the rights of, the, of our Turkmen kin in the critical stage in Iraq and to ensure that Turkmen who are among the fundamental constitutes of Iraq uh, come to the place they deserve in Iraq. At the beginning, we are beside our Turkmen brothers in meeting all the compulsory need, including education, health, and other humanitarian aid. With the other groups in the Iraq, the Turkmen are among our best, uh, our most basic approach to reaching a lasting peace, ensuring the highest level of humanitarian need, protecting life and pros uh, property, security, and property rights. And the last one from Recep Tayyip Erdogan about the Kirkuk issue again in 2007. Uh, one of the most important issues related to Iraq in status of Kirkuk. It is important that this issue, which deal with all Iraqi people, be resolved without haste. De delaying the referendum on the status of Kirkuk in this framework has been a logical step. On the other hand, the neighboring countries' process initiated under the leadership of our country has become a very important platform in which the Iraqi government and in the countries of the region have exchanged opinion uh, on how to solve the problem in Iraq and consent. concrete uh, solution proposals have been developed. And I will give you one example from the uh, Dautolo. It's really important. It's around 2005, uh, about the North Iraq issue again. Uh, when it comes to North Iraq, this issue needs to be addressed from a border context. One of the parameters that Turkey in foreign policy is uh, conducted uh, in zero problems with neighbors. The national pact we call Misaki Milli, if you want to uh, give you detail about Misaki Milli, what does it mean? Also, where our neighbors taught geography or history or that Treaty of Lausanne has a legal responsibilities legacy to Turkey in North Iraq. Musul, Kirkuk, Mahjivan, Batumi as well. All of them is inside to uh, our Misaki in the National Pact. These points uh, can become a field combining sound policies with neighboring Turkey if it carry out, but if a policy based on decline is followed, it may be cause for concern. And I will give you two examples from the two discourse uh, from the Abdullah Kuhn that I knew was uh, he's also talking about the Turkic issue to referendum. The election can have an impact that will trigger ethnic conflict. If our relatives, is tried right, talking about the you know, Turkmen's, uh, are not in peace in this regime, uh, if injustice are made to them, government in a democratic country cannot be involved in. Turkey supports Iraq territorial integrity. Turkey is not a country moving with treats. Turkey is one of the states of the region, and she has a responsibility from the history and the legacy. If a conflict emerges in Turkey, Turkey cannot stay without taking any action. And the last uh, discourse about the, uh, from the Abdullah Kul about the North Iraq, the boundaries of the Iraq are separate, and we have no border conflict with them. However, this should not mean that we will not be interested in the future of our relatives. 
we can see uh, when we are talking about North Europe policies in our policy makers, they always you know, emphasizing about the relatives, about Turkmen's historical legacy, Misak Milli, and Treaty of Lausanne. And we back to the we, we, we come to the you know the Syrian issue. Uh, I will give you just a little bit discourse about them and then I will try to be summarized. Uh, 2011 Recep Tayyip Erdogan's uh, discourse I will give you first. Uh, we have worries about the collapse of the Syria, the collapse of, the, of a sect, the emerge of a sectarian conflict. We don't want to experience the thing what I just mentioned because the situation of Syria is not like a situation of Libya. Libya may be considered as a foreign policy analysis somewhere for us, but Syria is not so. It's necessary for us to consider an internal policy because Syria, it's a country with a border, uh, I will give you a map, sorry. It's with a border of uh, 850 kilometers with Turkey. This is the longest border in Turkey. Uh, I hope that this trouble Syria will overtake quickly. Another uh, discourse about the Syria from Tayyip Erdogan. Our initiatives continue about Syria in the United Nations, the Arab League, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, and you know what you become as stronger every day. They are talking to the uh, Syrian refugees in that time. And the last one from the Erdogan uh, about Syria in 2011. Erdogan stated that adapt, adapting the Annan plan would not only bring a solution to Syria alone. The Syria as a process of reform based on the demands of demands of the people, based on parliamentary and constitutional system and expect, expanding freedoms should be initiated immediately. The demands of the opposition must be taken into account. Uh, I analyzed uh, more than 200 discourse from the uh, I, I just some uh, discourse about the, just one or two discourse about the cultural things and historical legacy. The other way is just try to be uh, liberal things and he's acting like a you know, modern national state. We have a border, this is uh, related with us, but he's not talking about the you know, Syrian Turkmen's and he's not talking about you know, religion as well. He's not talking about you know, historical legacy. About the, the Syria, he's just talking about the uh, international organizations holding problems and humanitarian things and blah blah. And Ahmed Davutoglu uh, is uh, in that time he was the uh, president, prime minister in our uh, country, uh, our state. So he talked too much about the Syria, but he's also uh, I cannot find uh, not more than one or two uh, discourse uh, about the. Uh, cultural things. He says, in recent days, in 2011, we have been more careful about events in Syria. In this, in the city close the border with Turkey, it was also some struggles. We took information about serious, the serious loss of life. In the last three days, borders from Syria have started to show sign in intensive immigration. For now, 2,800 Syrians crossed into the Turkey the first time in being of the Syrians refugees coming to Turkey. In 2011, he says, Turkey, the development of the Syrian border overlooking entirely underlined the, they regarded a humanitarian issue. 90% of incoming wife, children, a group of elder people and women. We have learned that access to some of its operation in that area, Syrian security forces. We hope that this conflict is and immediately the development uh, that led to civilian deaths uh, uninhabitable. Uh, we are doing our best for this. If this tension increases in the subject matter from Syria, we decrease from entering Turkey. It will give, uh, will do humanitarian support for what we see as a humanitarian issue. In Syria, we hope that we will able to accommodate the best arrivals until the conditions are normal. We hope that there will not be any developments uh, that will cause great migration movement, but at the end it happens. Uh, we don't have the idea of creating uh, any buffer zone at this stage in era about, you know, he's talking about the 2011. 
And the last uh, speech uh, from him, uh, Turkey position is a position of principle. The future of friendly and neighboring Syria, the demands of the Syrian people are important to us. We will watch them closely. I hope that Syrian democratic transformation in a stable and peaceful way to complete the structure of the people manifested by the will of the people, we will support them. The last one from the uh, Daoud Oluf speech about Syria in 2011, again, end of 2011. Syrian topics of discussed the common regional issues <coughs> between the Arab League and the Turkey. Turkey, the crisis with regional ownership is more with the spread, uh, and more tried to prevent bloodshed good cooperation between Turkey and Arab League. As a conclusion, we can see, uh, if we uh, compare the, these two events, two uh, different cases in Turkish foreign policy, North Iraq uh, expected PKK, of course. North Iraq foreign policy issue driven by the cultural things too much. Uh, but when we come to the Syrian issue, uh, the generally, you know, the Turkey acting like a, about Syrian foreign policy, acting like a the modern nation state, uh, and also uh, she is going to uh, be a uh, realist approach and the also ideological you know, humanitarian aid. We have uh, 850 kilometers away, something like that. Uh, so uh, if you have any question and contribution, I will really appreciate it after the presentation. Thank you so much.